Hey, Cookies here. I have not looked at any of the new hero talents from the new expansion yet. So we're going to be doing that now. I was kind of waiting until they initially kind of processed them and people got their opinions out. And then we were getting closer to beta. And then that's when I was going to talk about them. That way I can talk about them and then jump into the beta and mess around with them. Um, rather than kind of forgetting about them beforehand. So... Uh, here we go. So the first one we're going to talk about is just the Druid Hero Talents. So we have Keeper of the Grove. I believe this is... I could be getting these wrong, so feel free to correct me, but I believe this is Balance and Restoration. Okay, so we have uh, Treants of the Moon. Or I guess we read the first one. So Grove Guardians causes your next target that's healed to create two Dream Petals and do extra healing. So basically this just doubles down on using Grove Guardians as the talent choice rather than Nourish. Um, that's fine. Uh, Grove Guardians, I wish it was a little more interesting. Grove Guardians is kind of just a spell you press and then there's just NPCs that spawn and they just smart heal everything. So it's not really much thinking you have to do. You kind of just press the button and then it does healing for the next six seconds, but that's fine. Um, making them more powerful makes it at least more interesting because it's going to buff our next to our, our next healing spell. So it's going to make it to where instead of just spamming your Grove Guardians whenever you want to do lots of healing, you're going to want to like press one and then a regrowth, press another one, then a rejuve, press another one, then another healing spell. So it at least makes a little bit more interesting in how you have to approach it. Um, Grove Guardians cast Moonfire on nearby targets once every six seconds. This is huge for Mythic Plus because casting Moonfire... Uh, is not very fun when there's a lot of targets. You usually just end up using Sunfire and then spamming uh, some form of AoE. So this will be nice to help with that damage, and M+, especially. on In Raid, I don't know how useful this will be. I guess it'll keep a dot on the boss, but you can usually do that by yourself unless there's like multi-targets and stuff, but I'm sure I'm overthinking this. It's not going to be that insane. Uh, maximum mana increased by 5%. That's fine. Nothing to complain about there. Uh, regrowth protects you, reducing da you damage you take by 8% while regrowth is on you. This is pretty insane. Um, as far as I know, this only affects you. It's not your regrowth protects allies. So it won't give 8% damage reduction to everyone with regrowth. It's just yourself. But that's still very, very strong. Um, this is already just from the talent so far. I haven't seen the other tree yet, but this already looks like it's like by far going to be the best in Mythic Plus because you get damage reduction. You're getting damage. Um, you're increasing a spell that's already really good in Mythic Plus. Uh, we'll see what this other stuff does. So now we're going back over here. And um, we have Power of Nature. Your Grove Guardians increase the healing of your Rejuvenation, Efflorescence, and Life Bloom while active. So then again, we're not going to want to stack our Grove Guardians. Like we won't want to press them in succession because we're going to want to wait. Because they, as long as a Grove Guardian is active, we get that healing increase. So we're going to want to kind of like spread out the usage of our Grove Guardian. So this makes it a lot more interesting. Uh, your Gar Grove Guardian's Nourish and Swift Men spells also apply a minor Scenarian Ward that heals the target for an additional amount. That's pretty good. Um, I don't know how much, how good the first talent is. I guess for like Raid it might be better. But it seems like the... Scenario, the minor scenario ward application will be better overall because it's going to apply when the player takes damage, um, which means that it's doing more smart healing rather than just overhealing. Whereas, like the first talent, we can just end up overhealing a lot with it. So, take that one for now. And then, casting Swiftman increases your haste by 8% for six seconds. This is pretty cool. Uh, Wrath and Starfire damage increased by 10%, Regrowth, Wild Growth, and Swiftman healing increased. And then the other talent option is Reforestation grants Tree of Life for two additional seconds, which is this talent right over here, where every three Swiftmens we cast, we get Tree of Life for 10 seconds, so it'd be 12 seconds instead. Um, honestly, right off the bat, I think that the first talent is going to be better, even though it's not that significant. But I'm mostly thinking in terms of Mythic Plus, I am trying to think about Raid too. But in M Plus especially, like you, there are dungeons where you can take ref Reforestation and it's really, really strong. But getting it for an extra two seconds isn't going to make or break anything. Whereas we can get free damage and a little bit of extra healing from the first talent. And I think that's the key thing here is extra damage. So this is going to make you 
even more so want to go in boomkin form when there's a big aoe pack and not much damage happening and just spam starfire on all the mobs so that extra damage will play out really nicely and then for raid same thing honestly i honestly feel like the first talent will be overall better because increasing your wrath damage on the boss that's just free extra damage you're throwing in when you're not needing to do healing and again two extra seconds on reforestation isn't gonna make or break the class or anything like that um, then we go back over here. We have your Grove Guardian's healing is increased by 20% or Grove Guardian's cooldown is reduced by 3 seconds. So this one I feel like it's pretty obviously going to be the cooldown reduction because we get all these benefits like they're casting Moonfire, they are um, casting Minor Scenarian Wards, they're doing all these things. So having that cooldown reduction just means we get all those other buffs more often rather than just increasing the Grove Guardian's healing. And then the other talent is Grove Guardian. Or, oh, yeah, I already read both of them. I was like, early spring, that does not sound like it. But that, yeah, we went through them both. Okay, and then we have the middle talent. Uh, healing spells cast with Dream Surge generate an additional Dream Petal. So that is this right here. So we'll get three Dream Petals instead of two. So it's just more AoE healing, basically. And then the other talent is time elapsed while your major abilities are available to be used is subtracted from that ability's cooldown after the next time you use it up to 15 seconds. Affects nature swiftness, incarnation tree of life, and convoke the spirits. Um, so it basically can turn convoke into a 45 second cooldown. Sort of. Not exactly, but in a way. Uh, this will be interesting. I think this will be very, very niche in terms of, like, in Mythic Plus, you'd probably never take this because having reduced cool... or not, It's not even reduced cooldown. You pretty much never hold Convoke in Mythic Plus unless there's, like, a rare scenario where there's a boss or something. So it really just depends how the boss's abilities line up and when you're wanting to hold cooldowns, like healing cooldowns, versus just send them on cooldown. Um... So it seems like the first talent is going to be more often than not taken, but I can see some niche situations in like M plus dungeons or uh, even raid where things just line up to where it's nice to take this talent so that you can press, you can hold convoke, press it. And then instead of a minute waiting, you're only waiting 45 seconds, which then lines it up really nicely for, you know, whatever hap is happening next. So. I think overall, though, the extra dreams, uh, the extra dream pedal is going to be the go to. And then we just have a passive talent. Every five regrowths you cast makes your next Wrath, Starfire, or Entangling Roots instant and increases damage it deals by 100%. Every five star surges you cast makes your next regrowth or Entangling Roots instant. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Um, so, I mean, that's this is, again, just free damage. So every time you cast regrowth five times, you're just going to be sending a Wrath. Um, or Starfire. So for Mythic Plus, this is good. For Raid, also, this is great. But you just have to make sure you're actually using the proc. So finding a way to track that and then making sure you use it. Every five Star Surges, you can technically do that too. I don't know if we're going to be taking Star Surge. Usually you don't. Um, but that'll be interesting if this kind of convinces people to use Star Surge as like a as a healer, just so that you get a free regrowth every now and then. But I don't really see that happening. It's probably just for balanced druids, basically. Uh, and then our last capstone talent is Harmony of the Grove. Each Grove Guardians increases your healing done by 3% while active. So again, this, this kind of encourages you, like, hey, if you have all three of your Grove Guardians out, it's going to increase your healing done by 9%, which is pretty cool. But we have all these other buffs where they're doing things and uh, they are buffing us. Um, over the duration that they're active so we're not going to want to stack them all up I don't think maybe for like big cooldown usage like Trank or Tree of Life and stuff like that and Raid you might want to stack them all up just to have that extra healing but otherwise you're going to want to span them out and just keep that 3% buff active as much as you can yeah overall pretty cool talent tree there's a lot of passive stuff that is not that engaging but I'm glad that they at least are making the talent tree kind of give some more flavor to Grove Guardians rather than just being like a button where it's just like, oh, hey, press this button and they will heal people. Now there's some buffs tied to it and things like that. So you have to think about it just a little bit more. And then next we have Wildstalker, which I'm guessing is Feral and Resto. 
So this will be really interesting. I'm excited to see this. All right, let's see. Uh, thriving Growth. Rip and Rake Damage has a chance to cause Bloodseeker Vines to grow on the victim. Dealing damage... Oh, dealing bleed damage. Okay. So it's just extra bleed damage. Wild Growth, Regrowth, and Efflorescence Healing has a chance to cause Symbiotic Blooms to grow on the target healing for an additional amount over six seconds. So it makes your dots and your hots have an extra or have a chance to apply an additional hot or dot, basically. Multiple instances of these can overlap. Okay, that is really cool. I like that. So that means you can just get a bunch of procs and uh, just keep stacking this, this bleed, like multiple applications of this bleed or multiple applications of this hot. So this is already, I mean, with the Grove Guardian stuff, it looked really strong with some of the talents you get, but this is already looking pretty strong in terms of uh, cat weaving and stuff like that for M+. So that'll be interesting. And just all the extra hots. Extra hots in Mythic Plus is huge because Mastery plays such an important role in how much healing we do in Mythic Plus. Uh, hunt Beneath the Open Skies. Damage and healing while in cat form increased by 5%. Moonfire and Sunfire damage increased by 10%. Okay, that's already pretty insane. So I'm assuming that if we apply heals and then go into cat form, it's going to increase all those hots that we have rolling on people. So this will help a lot again with kitty, like with cat weaving. Then we have attacking from prowl increases the tra the chance for shred, rake, and swipe to critically strike for six seconds. That's pretty huge. Uh, casting regrowth increases the chance for your periodic heals to critically heal for eight percent oh, by eight percent for ten seconds. Awesome. Um, again, more, just more damage and more healing numbers. That's pretty good. Anything that gives us both damage and healing options is going to be big for M+. That's, like, mostly what I'm keeping an eye out on. And, I mean, even in Raid, I've, like, on farm bosses and stuff, I like to go with the Mythic Plus build and just cat weave on the bosses and stuff. And it's, uh, you can do a lot of damage as a rest of in Raid. But, anyways, uh, Rip and Ferocious Bite damage increased by 5%. Rejuve. Healing spells increase by 10%. So again, it's literally just passive. Here you do more damage and you do more healing. Those These are insane already just for uh, the flexibility of being an M+. Uh, when you remove an effect with Soothe or remove Corruption, gain a combo point and heal for 4% of your max health. If you're at full health, an injured party or raid member will be healed instead. That's pretty cool. So just a little tiny heal for using your Dispel or your Soothe. And then you also get a combo point, which, again, is kind of increasing your damage. Uh, enemies pulled into Urshel's Vortex are rooted in place for three seconds. That's really nice. Damage may cancel, cancel the effect. Um, during Bark Scan, your movement speed is increased by 10%, and every second flowers grow beneath your feet that heal up to three nearby injured allies. Okay, so when we Bark Skin, we're going to be healing people, and that's pretty good because most of the time when we Bark Skin, the group is taking damage. Or, like, even in Raid, for instance, everyone is taking damage usually when you're pressing your defensive. So I think that's pretty strong. I think the rooted-in-place thing with Vortex is kind of situational. Like, maybe if mobs run away, like you have Brackenhide Hollow, where you have all the humanoid mobs that run away when they're low HP, that might be useful. But usually Vortex is enough by itself to just pull them in, and then they die before, you know, they run any further away. So we'll go with uh, Flower Walk. And then we have... Uh, Bond with nature, healing you receive is increased by 10%. That's always pretty good. Makes us more uh, survivable. And then, or increases our survivability. And then we have harmonious, harmonious constitution. Your regrowth healing to yourself is increased by 50%. This is not that great. I mean, it's nice. Okay, let me think about this, actually. Okay, I think it's fine, but it encourages you, like, from reading the tooltip, it's going to encourage people to go, oh, I should press regrowth on myself. But a lot of the time in Raid and Mythic Plus, usually as a Resto Druid, we have Life Bloom on ourself because it increases all of our POTS ticking rates on everybody else. So then regrowthing yourself is not that great because then you're missing out on a regrowth. Because if you regrowth someone else, it also applies regrowth to whoever has Life Bloom on them. But kind of deceptively, this talent is still good because... When we regrowth someone else, the regrowth that applies to us will do that 50% increased healing. But this is just misleading to people who are going to read this tooltip and go, oh, hey, 
I do extra healing when I, you know, heal myself with regrowth. It's kind of like how shamans get increased healing on themselves with uh, healing surge with the talent, but that doesn't have the same application where you healing surge someone else and it also uses it on yourself. So that's just one thing to think about. I think it's really strong um, and it's probably, I mean, I think maybe they're equal or probably the healing received by 10% is more overall. But uh, yeah, when using this talent, it doesn't mean to regrowth yourself. It just it just means that your regrowths are going to do more healing when applied to you. And the way we apply them is usually by using them on other people while we have Life Bloom active. Okay. Uh, resilient Flourishing. Bloodseeker, Vines, and Symbiotic Blooms last two additional seconds. That's already huge. When a target afflicted by Bloodseeker Vines dies, the Vines jump to a valid nearby target. Okay, so we're just getting another uh, Adaptive Swarm. That is That is nuts. Uh, and then we have Root Network, which each active Bloodseeker Vine increases the damage your abilities deal by 2%, and the Symbiotic Blooms increase our healing spells by 2%. That's also really nice. Um, I think the first one is really, really strong, though, for Mythic Plus specifically. Um, I think that's insane that we're going to have Adaptive Swarm and Bloodseeker Vines uh, just bouncing across all our targets and stuff. Okay, and then we have when Bloodseeker Sorns expire, uh, you or you use Ferocious Bite on their target, they explode in thorns, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies. Damage reduced above five targets, that's fine. Um, but it still does sound like it's uncapped. When Symbiotic Blooms expire or cast, you cast Rejuvenation on their target, flowers grow around the target, healing them and nearby allies. Okay, so we have a way to consume these buffs. And ideally, we're going to be wanting to do that be right before they expire rather than doing it when they have, you know, high stacks. So if there's one target that has, like, three seconds remaining on a Bloodseeker Thorn and then one target who has, you know, just gotten it refreshed, then we're going to want to use it on the target with lower uh, duration. And then we have Twin Sprouts. When Bloodseeker Vines or Symbiotic blooms grow they have a 20 percent chance to cause another growth of the same type okay so it's literally just adaptive swarm because this is just an adaptive swarm talent they just changed the names pretty much of them it is uh i don't know exactly where it is but um it literally does the exact same thing where every time that adaptive swarm splits it has a chance to duplicate itself um or i guess that's every time it jumps on a new target it has a chance to split and apply the same amount of stacks to a nearby target. And then Swiftman causes a symbiotic bloom to grow on the target for four seconds. That's pretty nice. Um, for Raid, that, that'll probably be pretty ideal. Uh, but I think the first talent is just way too strong, because again, there's just so many talents here that are just doing, okay, you do increased damage and increased healing. Okay, you do increased damage and increased healing. Like, it's just doubling down on both. And then we have our Capstone, which is Vigorous Creepers. Bloodseeker Vines increases the damage that your abilities deal to affected enemies by 10%. Again, this is just a copy of Adaptive Swarm. And Symbiotic Blooms increases the healing of your healing spells to affected targets. Okay, so lots of dots, lots of hots. So I definitely take back what I said. I think for high-end Mythic Plus, the other talent tree is still going to end up being better depending on how the dungeons are tuned. Um, but this is really, really, really good for that like hybrid gameplay where you're trying to do a lot of damage and still heal a lot. This is going to be, this will definitely be what you run. And then once we get up to the higher keys in Mythic Plus, I think that's where that debate might happen, where you might need to take the other talent tree just for the sake that it gives you damage reduction and gives you more tools in keeping people alive. Um, but man, if you don't need that, this this is absolutely insane. People are going to be doing so much damage with this talent tree. But yeah, that is uh, my coverage of the hero talents for Druid. My first impressions, I guess. I'll definitely talk about them again. I'm going to be playing the beta and hopefully making some beta content and stuff. So we will try them out and get to see them in action very soon. So hope to see you there.